it. <laughs> Senior by hair only, but we're so, good you're, so glad you're here. Like she said, we have started through August. We're going to go through the book of Colossians. So if you want to learn and grow to be ahead, next week will be chapter 3. So we are going to dive into chapter 2. Last week, we started in chapter 1, and we saw that Paul was writing to the church, the believers, to warn them to be ready for those false gods that were being pushed and the teachers that were trying to share everything else but Jesus. And we learned that Jesus is supreme, and that's all we need. And this week, as we dive in, Paul continues on, and he says, In Christ is hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Man, we have to get through this life here, this short temporary home. Man, we should seek wisdom and knowledge, spiritual wisdom and knowledge. And Paul says, in Christ, he is everything that we need with that wisdom and knowledge. So look at, let's start in Colossians chapter 2, starting in verse 1 to 3. It says, I want you to know how much I have agonized for you and the church at Laodicea and for many other believers who have never met me personally. I want them to be encouraged and knit together by strong ties of love. I want them to have complete confidence they understand God's mysterious plan, which is Christ himself. We get that? See, God's plan is Christ. So when we're in Christ, we can receive all that wisdom and knowledge we need to live here the right way, to shine a light, to die to self, to be different. See, it says, in him lie hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. See, if we don't go through Jesus Christ, we will always struggle with wisdom and knowledge. See, we'll try to get it in this world, and it'll always fall short. And it doesn't matter what institution you go to, what higher learning you have, if you don't have Christ and you're going through him, the wisdom and knowledge will be foolish. That's what God says. And we we see it live now. Ivy League education doesn't mean that much when it comes to wisdom and knowledge spiritually. So we dive in to look at him. Look at Proverbs 9.10. It says, fear of the Lord is the foundation of wisdom. We have to grab onto that. See, it's not a fear like we're frightened like a, a movie, a scary movie, that reverent fear that God is God and he created everything. And he made everything through Christ. And it was made through Christ and for Christ and nothing is made without Christ and for him. So we get that wisdom when we have that reverent fear of him. Then it says, knowledge of the Holy One results in good judgment. See, when our knowledge comes from, from the word of God who was Christ, we get to open this daily and we get to dive in and we get to ask God and seek it and he gives it to us. Now we can start understanding good judgment and we are made aware of poor judgment. Again, in a fast-paced world where we're running and things are going so fast, I want good judgment. And we get it right here. I love it. It says, this was written, inspired by God, to teach us what is wrong and to show us what is right and how to live that way. So again, in Proverbs, we get it, knowledge of the Holy One. See, that's building a relationship. That's growing to know Jesus more will result in good judgment. And I hope you desire that. Here at Christ Church, we want all of us to learn together. There's no hierarchy other than Jesus is the head, and we are all body parts coming together to help each other to keep maturing and growing so we have that wisdom and knowledge that comes from Christ and that we can have good judgment. See, we all need to be reminded and encouraged so we don't forget his truth. Why do we teach truth here? Because it's so important because the world is going to tell you what they believe truth is. And we know there's only one truth. He, would have said, he wouldn't have said it. I am the way, the truth, and the life if he wasn't the only truth. So we can't go anywhere else 
to get it. See, our judgment then, when we're going through Christ and learning his truth, and then living his truth, even when it's hard. See, even when our friends might not like us because of that truth, or our family, we stand true and say, man, God is supreme. Christ is all I need. I will love the way he loves. I will live the way he lived. See, then our judgment will be good in everything we do. It might not be popular, but it'll be good. See, I want to live to please the Lord, not live to please the world. See, there are things, and there will always be people that are persuasive, salesmen, pushing things that sound good to us. That's why it's important for us to know who Christ is and what he says and why we don't read this just for information. We read this for transformation. See, when we transform into his image, now we understand when we hear something that doesn't line up with the word. See, it's so easy for us sometimes to follow everything else but Jesus. That's why we're told to put on the full armor of God and be ready. That's why I love going through this book of Colossians right now. It is a warning to the church. It is to believers. It's not to unbelievers. It's telling believers, listen, be ready. There's going to be people in this world who is run by Satan. He is the ruler. He has no power over Jesus, but he is the ruler because that's how it was set up. Jesus said it. Here comes the ruler of this world. He has no power over me, but I will do the Father's will. See, that will set us up perfectly to understand the wisdom and knowledge we need to go home. And that's just confess, surrender you, and accept Jesus. Repent and know that we are going to fall short and we're sinners. Don't live in that. I'm not a believer in, oh, I'm just a sinner saved by grace. I'm going to get through. No, man. He saved us and gave us free gift of Jesus, and that's the grace. And then he showers with mercy because he knows us. And he goes, man, if you keep building this relationship, and you understand Jesus, and you're in him, you're going to get everything you need, and you'll be home. All it really takes is us to repent and surrender us. And that's the hardest part. We love us. We want to do what we feel is right instead of what we know is right. So we'll read this sometimes and we'll skip over the parts that we don't want to be challenged on. And sadly, that's why I love Paul sharing to the church, be ready for this. Because sometimes as we avoid the difficult things, we avoid what truly can help us grow and mature to be like Christ. See, he never said, accept my son, and it's going to be so easy. It'll just be fun all the time. See, it's going to be challenging here because I want you to understand when I gave you free will, I want you to choose me because you love me. And when you love me, you'll obey me, and I'll give you my son to cover your sins. He'll he'll fulfill all the laws I set up. And in him, you'll have a strength because I'll give you the Holy Spirit in you. And now when you feed it and you keep growing and learning, you'll continue to do better and better. See, in Colossians, continuing on in 4 and 5, it says, I am telling you this so no one will deceive you with well-crafted arguments. Why is he warning them? Because there's people that will try to tell you with well-crafted arguments. We have to be ready because they'll sound really, really good. We always talk about this and we laugh. The devil is not red with horns and so obvious to see. Oh, here comes the devil. I better be ready. He's deceiving. And he's going to use people in this world that don't know Christ to be well-spoken, to be Ivy League graduates to be in any level of intelligence that the world can make up. Are we ready for it? Are we diving in? Are we using the only thing 
that is needed to get through this, to understand Jesus, have a relationship, to pray, to worship, to give it to him. See, it says, for through I, though I am far away from you, my heart is with you, Paul says, I, and I rejoice that you are living as you should and that your faith is in Christ alone and it's strong. See, your faith is strong. He's checking. He's just not saying, okay, man, cool. That person said a prayer and I'm going to keep going. See, I'm checking on him. How's it going? See, that's discipleship. That's coming along other people. And because sometimes when you have this light go off and you got to accept Christ and you want to start growing your faith, now the attacks come a little more. Now Satan's like, darn it. I loved that guy before because he was the easiest target. Now he's seeking. Now it's going to have a little pressure on. I'm going to start throwing things at him to see. And we have to be ready. We have to be strong in Christ. So he's coming along and checking what's going on. How cool is that? See, that's what someone does when they care for you. When you have friends and family built up and you're sick, people check on you. I love that. We're a place to call home. We want to know. We want to pray. We want to meet you. We want to get connected so you're not doing this alone. See, it truly does matter how we live when we say we're Christian. See, for so many years, it's just a cool word to throw out there. And I think the last so-and-so years, I've been a believer for 19 years now, and, and accepting Christ and going through it, it was a lot of joy, happy, 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 happy. See, happy is so up and down if you're not understanding what joy is. And we need to know truth. We can't just hear the good things. We have to hear the real things, the challenging things, the things that will keep us strong. See, when our faith is strong, we can tell when something doesn't line up with the word. See, my heart is church is so important here together because we come together to learn and we're going to challenge you. We're going to read scripture. We're going to study it together. And then you're the church. You have to go out there and put it into action and continue to grow. And it matters. And when you're strong, you're aware of the world's deception. Man, you might not memorize every single verse in the Bible. I do not. I have to read it every day, and I have verses that stick to me. And God says, never worry about what to say. If you're in him and you have that wisdom and that knowledge that comes with him, that spiritual stuff, the Holy Spirit is pouring in truth, he'll give you the words to say. You'll know how to act and how to share truth with somebody. Keep pushing because we, when we accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, we need to keep growing and maturing every day. Every day. It's not one time and our journey's done. It's a process because we have to continue to reach out and care for people and keep growing. Paul says, I'm not there yet. He kept looking to do more and to show Christ more. And he is... 17 books of this New Testament were through Paul and people with him, and I'm still not there, he says. See, it's not, I read the Bible once. See, it's living and active. We don't tell you to read it to mark a box off. We tell you to read it because it will fill you with life, and it'll fill you with the sword, the offense you need to cut through this mess. The world is changing, and some is for the good. Like I said last week, I'm sure Paul would have loved the automobile to drive around the churches. There are good advancements, but Jesus is not changing. See, it's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He loved us. He loved the Father, and he surrendered his will to do God's will. He died for us and took a beating 
How amazing is that? If you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior here, come on down. My wife is here. I am here. Kaylee, we have a team here. We'll pray with you and talk to you and walk it out with you. Again, your life then begins. And now we continue to grow and we continue to have that joy and that passion that helps that light continue. And that's what it takes. It takes our choice and a passion to love God so much. I love the worship today. It is driving us to, I stand with arms wide and heart abandoned. Is he that important to you? That's all should matter. That he loved us when we were not worthy. See, that's grace. It goes on in Colossians 2, 6 and 8, it says, And now, just as you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord, you must continue to follow him. You must continue to follow him. We come to church so we can get fed, but that's not the only food you eat. If you only ate on Sundays, you wouldn't look like this. I eat all the time. But that's what he's saying. When you eat all the time and you pour into this all the time, you will understand that I continue to follow Jesus. See, I'm fully devoted to Jesus, and my life shows it. See, it says, let your roots grow down into him, and let your lives be built on him. If our lives were built on him, what a difference this world would be. See, we would have no confusion on who we were. We would have no confusion that we would have to add drugs in. We would have no confusion on greed. See, we would be full in him. Our lights would be built on him. Then our faith will grow strong in the truth we were taught, and you will overflow with thankfulness. It's not for thanksgiving only. Every morning when I wake up and I, whoa, okay, I'm good. Thank you, God. I'm not guaranteed. But man, I'm thankful because now I can live for him and not me. And again, that's hard. So I pray and I prep and I go have my devotion time and I study because I want to be filled because as soon as I step into this world, crazy is going to be all around. And we have to be ready. It says, don't let anyone capture you with empty philosophies and high-sounding nonsense that comes from human thinking and from spiritual powers of this world rather than from Christ. Don't let anyone capture you. Please, they're trying. A woman is a woman. A man is a man. Don't let them capture you with what they want you to believe. Even if everyone in the world believes it, Christ Church, we're not going to, because we're going to believe this. And we have to continue, and that's why Paul is challenging them. They are doing weird things. That's why I have to check. There's people selling good things. We have to keep growing. Let Christ be it. Build that foundation on the cornerstone that is the perfect, spotless Lamb of God. See, the world's thoughts are nonsense. Don't let anyone capture you with worldly nonsense. And I think why there's a revival in the church in 2020, I really believe there is. And I know my wife has a passion for it. And, and it's, it's something that we need to open up now and stop just being the kumbaya church and start being the church God created us to be. And we stand up and push through it because there's nonsense. And we got to push back. Truth. Light. When light happens and we're the light, what happens to darkness? There you go. Don't let darkness keep coming in. Shine bright by knowing him. See, the fact that we are human should awaken us that we need a Lord and Savior. I need Jesus as my Lord and Savior. 
on my own. I'm not good. I need him. I'm created in God's image. It's in there on all of us. That Holy Spirit brings it out, but we got to feed it. We got to keep growing. See, we'll never be complete without Jesus. Never. Money won't do it. Job status won't do it. Higher education won't do it. If it doesn't come along with Jesus and the word who is our sword and it's Christ who became flesh and he's pouring into us to keep us grounded and to keep us holding that line and having that unwavering faith. That's our mission for the year. Do you want to hold the line and have unwavering faith? Because that keeps us strong together. We will struggle if we're worldly with self-acceptance. How many times do we think we're not good enough? That's what Satan wants us to do. So when we start listening to the world, oh, I can't do anything. God can't use me. I'm not good enough. See, we battle that. We should wake up saying, hey, God said I am the head, not the tail. He loved me so much that he gave his son for me and you. That should make us celebrate always. See, we'll struggle with fear. And that fear will lead us to do things that aren't good in God's eyes. That's real. That's why we don't fear anyone but that reverent fear of God. See, we fear things in this world when this world can't do anything to us. It can do something to our body. But again, if we're locked into this and we believe Jesus is our Lord and Savior and he came and because of him we have eternal life, Paul says in Philippians 121, living means living for Christ. So I'm not living for Keith. I'm not living for Paul as Paul. I'm living for Christ and then dying is gain. He gave us home. So when we get caught up in this world, fear changes us. And now we start doing things we know aren't right, but it makes us feel better. And we don't understand. Again, how cool is it that God cared enough to inspire people to write this to strengthen us as the church? I loved it. This week learning and reading, I read a book that is, is just phenomenal. Um, I can't even pronounce the guy's name, so I won't even try to. But it, it's erased, and it's phenomenal. But it's, he talks about the importance of us being that warrior, that watchman. See, God tells Ezekiel, if I give you something to share to somebody, and they're sinning, and you don't share it, and they die in their sin, you will be held accountable too. See, as a pastor, I believe God called me here to be a watchman. I have to teach his truth, not his fluff, so you give me a check. See, I got to teach his truth so you fear him in that reverence to say, man, he loves me too. I'm going to go to church and learn so I can be a light. Because if I don't teach you truth, he's watching me more than he's watching you. Because if you die in your sin and I never told you that was a sin, he is holding me responsible as well. We're all pastors. We all get to share. We all get to live our life for Christ. See, we fear the things of the world and we forget that God says, fear only me. Jesus says it. If you fear God, he's the one who can separate soul and spirit. He can cast you out and take everything, and you'll be in hell separated from God. He's not sending you there, but he's letting you choose. He'll honor your choice. What do you want to do? Don't fear anything except have that reverence for God because, again, if you die and you know Jesus, it's gain. It's celebrating. I can't be 100% sure, but I got to imagine whoever's passed away and has gone to heaven is not looking down here wishing they were back here. If they are, they're not in heaven. 
because there is so much that we can't understand and so much amazement. There's no more tears, no more pain, no more suffering. Paul goes on in Colossians 9 and 10, for in Christ lives all the fullness of God in a human body. So you also are complete through your union with Christ. You're complete with your union with Christ, who is the head over every ruler and authority. That's why I love it. Yeah, we don't cause trouble. We follow the laws and we live, but we live for Christ. That's where our identity is in Christ. Just like when Peter and the disciples when Jesus rose and, and then died again, and they said, you can't talk about Jesus. And they were talking about Jesus, and they said, you can't talk about Jesus. He said, who do we listen to? You or God, we're listening to God. So they whipped him, and they considered it a great joy. Are you ready to stand firm when the world tells you you can't do something, but God says you can do it? Do you do it? I want to be whipped. I want to, be, I want to live with that excitement and a Lord and Savior that loved me when I was a wreck for a lot of years. See, when our fear changes to reverent fear of the Lord, we stop pushing our desires and we start listening to his because he's excited. He's excited to make us grow. He's excited as we mature. He's excited as we talk to him and he knows us and we know him and there's relationship being built. He's excited. Why aren't we? Again, this is to strengthen believers so we can shine his light and make disciples. See, once we accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, that's for us. Now our life is for others. I'm no longer just for me. I don't sit in my house and look in the mirror and go, man, I'm so glad you're saved. Hey, let's go out today and talk to somebody. Oh, no, I'm good. See, it's for others now. Now I go out in the world. I make disciples. I come alongside people because my testimony might help somebody. See, my testimony won't help everyone. That's why you're here because we're all struggling in something that God saved us from. And we can all share it. And when we share it and somebody comes along that's struggling there, they don't know Jesus and they're struggling. And now all of a sudden they meet you and whoa, you went through that too? Oh, wow. And now we start building. See, now Christ is using us and we're in Christ and what a difference. See, if we're lukewarm Christians or Christians that don't stand for his truth and we keep accepting sin... He will spit us out and we'll be considered useless. But no, I'm a Christian. I love challenge stuff. When I read Matthew 7, 21, when Jesus says, I never knew you. And they said, but we cast out demons in your name. We prophesied in your name. I never knew you. That inspires me to be known I, geez, I want to keep growing and learning so I don't hear that. And that's what happens when we're lukewarm. We open that door. See, our Christianity doesn't bring us to heaven. Jesus does. In Christ, we're saved. Saying Jesus doesn't mean nothing. Demons knew Jesus. There, didn't have a good thing. We can live in him. He can live through us because of the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit only teaches what Jesus taught. He never will teach us something different. How do you know you're living and following the Spirit? Because the Spirit will only line up with the Word of God. If you're saying, well, the Word says this, but the Spirit's telling me this, you're wrong. You can fight it, you'll still be wrong. See, we should be celebrating the day we chose Jesus. And we need to remember that when we surrender and let God transform us, we're new and we're free. Amen. I love this. It's not going to be up there, but Psalm 92, 4, it says, you thrill me, Lord, with all you have done for me. 
I sing for joy because of what you have done. Does God thrill you? It says, you thrill me, Lord. I'm so grateful that he waited for me for 37 years. 37 years I lived for my, 36 years I lived for myself. Caught him in the world, trying to do life, doing what I wanted to do, partying, having fun, doing whatever. And I'm so happy. As soon as I had an awakening and I said, God, I need you, I can't do this. He was right there. And it thrills me every day that he didn't care how long it took me. He just wanted me to get there. He doesn't care how long. Just know that if you wait too long and something happens, it's too late. That's why it's so cool. We have a chance to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior and be ready to be in him and be full of joy and thankfulness and sing praises. I love worship songs. When I accepted Christ, I never knew any. It was weird to me. I didn't like to go into worship. I just started going to church. I didn't get it. I was listening to other things. Now, if it was Def Leppard or something else, I could get into it. Little Aerosmith, I could get it. Van Halen, I'm on it. Worship was like, what? Then as I started growing and learning, man, I can't listen to anything else but worship music. It charges me. I, 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 told, I tell my wife all the time, when you finish before I preach, I don't care what other churches say, you have to build it up. The last song has to be fire because I got to come out there. I'm Italian. I don't need that much to push me. But I love to get, I don't want a song that's going to be slow and then I got to go preach. I want to get fired up. I, I want, I mean, listen, I'll ro watch Rocky again for the 500th time. But I've got to get that because I, God deserves that. God deserves my best. See, he thrills me. And it's amazing. See, as we go on in Colossians 11 and 12, it says, when you came to Christ, you were circumcised, but not by a physical procedure. Christ performed a spiritual circumcision by cutting away, the cutting away of your sinful nature. Listen, if you're struggling, that's all of us. But believe it. He cut it away. You don't have to live in that sin. Now, another sin might come up, and we have to repent, and we have to keep a watch and have that full body armor on, but don't just say, well, that's just my family struggles with that. Okay? Nothing you will struggle with when you surrender and let go of it. Now, it'll be a challenge. It'll be hard. But when God said the narrow road is difficult, and a few will find it, it's because it's going to be hard. So you're going to have to work and talk to God and read to God and understand him and pray to God and worship, and he'll show you how you don't need that. If you just say, well, I, I accepted God and I said a prayer and my, my sin keeps coming up, I don't understand. Keep building, keep growing. He cut your sinful nature away. For you were buried with Christ when you were baptized. Bapti baptism is one of our essentials because why would you not get baptized? Jesus did. I have tried to do everything Jesus did, and I'm not close. But man, that is our example. We have a baptism right here. It'll never be too hot or too cold. If you haven't been baptized, let's throw. I'll throw the water in there. Let's go. Next week, come back. We'll be baptizing. It doesn't save you, but what it opens up is you understand that death and that burial and that resurrection to new life. That's our example. We get and it's amazing. He says, and with him, you were raised to new life because you trusted the mighty power of God who raised Christ from the dead. Write on your card, baptism. We'll do it. Exciting. It should be another one of those things that thrill you. See, we never need to look back at our old self. We have been raised to new life celebrate it, be confident in it, enjoy what he has done for you, and never forget the old is dead. Now, 
Our old is good for our testimony. So we, we use our testimony, our old selves, to build up what God has moved us from. See, now we can help people. But don't sit there and look back at it. I'm not good enough. Darn it. Every time God's using me, then I go, oh, but I did this before. Let it go. He cut it away. Keep growing. Be alive in Christ. And understand that you have that power. You have that resurrected life because of Jesus. Colossians goes on in verses 13 to 15. You were dead because of your sins and because your sinful nature was not yet cut away. Then God made you alive with Christ, for he forgave all our sins. He canceled the record of the charges against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross. In this way, he disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities. He shamed them publicly by his victory over them on the cross. The cross, he's not on it, but he was nailed to it. We can nail all that sin to that cross. He's taken it and he's gone with it. Don't get locked up in your stuff. Let it go. That's what I'm saying. You confess, repent, and surrender and start living for Christ. He will give you all that wisdom and understanding you need. Jesus has given us victory so we can be in Christ in this crazy temporary home. We're just passing through. Let's do it with joy. Let's do it with celebration. Let's do it with boldness. Let's do it because Christ is worth it. Warren Worsby shares, Paul made it clear that the Christian is not subject to, in any way to the Old Testament legal system, nor can it do him any good spiritually. Jesus Christ alone is sufficient for our every spiritual need, for all of God's fullness is in him. Again, don't get, he's not taking away the law. He fulfilled it. That's the excitement. See, Christ came to fill the law up so we're not checking boxes anymore because it was so difficult for us to check a box. And the 613 laws, oh gosh, what next? He fulfilled it. So if we live in Christ, we're living for Christ. We're not living for ourselves. See, he's covered all those things for us. See, we connect to him relationally. And when he builds us up and we're willing to let him and we're growing and we're repenting when we mess up and we keep coming to him, see, that surrender lines us up with his spiritual wisdom and knowledge. See, in Christ is us being absent from ourselves, which leads us to obedience to him and shows us how to be loving. See, Jesus, again, showed the example perfectly. He went to, Christ, he went to God and said, if you can take this cup, but not my will be done, but yours. Knowing he had to take a beating, we don't have to take a beating. Why are we waiting to say, not my will? Again, this world will push. Your will is what you need to live by. It'll feel good. It'll be good. And you just need to love. God so loved the world, he gave his son to die for us. Colossians 16, 19, 2, 16 and 19 says, So don't let anyone condemn you for what you eat or drink, for not celebrating certain holy days or new moon ceremonies or Sabbaths. For these rules are only shadows of the realities yet to come. And Christ himself is that reality. Christ is your Sabbath. Don't listen. Oh, well, the Sabbath is really Saturday. And you go to church on Sunday, you're sinning. See, churches are fighting each other. Why? See, Christ is our Sabbath. He is our rest. He says, if you come to me, I will give you rest. Don't get caught up in high-sounding stuff, even if it's from church. Study it. Check it. Read it. He's warning us. 
Don't get caught up in certain holy days and new moon ceremonies and Sabbaths. For these rules are only shadows of the reality yet to come. And Christ himself is that reality. Don't let anyone condemn you by insisting on pious self-denials or the worship of angels, saying they have had visions about these things. Their sinful minds have made them proud, and they are not connected to Christ, the head of the body. For he holds the body together with its joints and ligaments, and it grows as God nourishes it. How does God nourish you? By giving you this. See, Jesus said to his disciples when they brought him food, I don't need it, I'm hungry, I get nourishment from doing the will of God. See, if we did the will of God and we were excited about it, there's times when I'm hungry, I'm late, and my staff knows 11.15 is about it, and I got to eat. I got to feed this thing. But if somebody came in and talked about the Lord and wanted to learn and grow and talk, I'll go the rest of the day and not even think about food no more. Because God nourishes me. Can he, he can nourish you. Dive in. Understand that. It grows. See, the body grows as God nourishes it. Jesus perfects our faith. And our faith is what shows we believe in God. Belief is more than just that word they want to throw out there. Belief is action. Belief is doing God's will. Belief is having faith to actually step through it and do something when the world thinks it might be crazy. Abraham was a man of faith. Why? He was willing to sacrifice his only son. And God said, whoa, whoa, I, now I know you're a man of faith. That'll never happen again. No one will ever challenge anyone to sacrifice their kids. See, as we believe in him, we mature and we deny self and we shine like him. When we understand he is supreme, he makes us free and we don't get caught up in this world. Look at Colossians 2, finishing up with 20 and 23. It says, you have died with Christ and he has set you free from the spiritual powers of this world. My wife said it during worship. He was in us, is greater than he is in the world. He, he has freed us from the spiritual powers of this world. So why do we keep on following the rules of the world, such as don't handle, don't taste, don't touch? Such, ru such rules are mere human teachings about things that deteriorate as we use them. These rules may seem wise because they require strong devotion pious self-denials, and severe bodily discipline, but they provide no help in conquering a person's evil desires. Without Christ, without diving in, the evil will continue to push and push, and it will win. Christ is the only thing that will set us free. See, we can conquer this world by living in Christ and dying to self not popular, but it's truth. We have to live in the truth. See, as we live in the truth, we start to understand who he is, and we show our love by our obedience to him. See, and our obedience shows he matters more than what we desire, and our transformation makes a change for us and others. It's important as we grow, we understand what our new lives should look like please join us at Christ Church and come here and learn with us. We are going through Colossians chapter 3 next week. We invite you to come do this together. If you have any questions, call me. Come visit, ask questions, but let's do this learning together. Let's strengthen each other in Christ and let's continue to be the body of Christ and be led by the head that will keep everything together for his good. Let's pray. Dear God, we come and we thank you for your love, for your son that you sent us. Help us to not see anything but him, to thrill in what you've done for us, to sing praises, 
Help us grow when we are hurting. Help the right people be there to pray with us, to come alongside us, and help us to always seek your will and not ours. In Jesus' name we pray.